Well, this is a uh, first for the Audrain Museum Network's YouTube channel. I'm not alone in the car, and I'm not with Jay Leno. <laughs> uh, I'm with a guy who's even funnier than Jay Leno, uh, David Donahue. Uh, certainly David would agree that he's a better driver than, than Leno is, but uh, we'll just keep that a secret between us. We won't tell Jay. Um, and, of course, David is eminently qualified to be with me in the car today for two reasons. One, because, of course, he is a terrific and winning race car driver. And the second is because I can ride in the car. I can drive him in the car, which, of course, you've never seen me drive Jay in the car. And um, I think that after David has had Jay drive him, we're not quite sure if you'll see Jay drive <laughs> David anymore either. But that's another story. Um, the car we're driving today is a 2009 Ferrari 430 Scuderia. And uh, it's one of those interesting cars, uh, a great genre that we've seen a lot of, which is the track day car for the street. Now, back in the day, of course, every track day car used to be for the street. It wasn't a big deal because people would buy their cars, drive them from home to the track, race them, and drive them back home again. So, and that was for real active race cars in real series. Jaguars and all of that, they drive from the factory in, in, in England to races in France and Germany. Uh, so now, however, with the rise of the specialized, specialist race car, this is sort of a big deal. This is, I guess, the, the, the street track version of the, uh, the challenge race cars. And, uh, you know, I often wonder, and I'm sure you do as well, David, what do you get on the street out of a car prepared for the track? Well, I know you don't get a real smooth ride. <laughs> That's pretty much par for the course. I, I, I really think that the success of the Ferrari Challenge Series spurred something like this because those drivers wanted something like their race car for the street. Of course, those cars aren't street legal, so it, uh, it was a natural for them to uh, create something like this. I think they had a built-in customer base with the Ferrari Challenge drivers. but. Um, no, I think I think you get a car that's uh, less less compromised for the track, in that you know it's already got all the suspension upgrades and so forth um, built into it. You don't have to hire someone to go change the car from um, the way it is on the showroom and uh, take it to the track, go have some fun. Yeah, it's sort of hard to imagine your uh, challenge race car with all this Alcantara and a radio and air conditioning. The Alcantara is nice because it doesn't reflect into the windshield, so you get a really clear view. You know, right now we've got the sun shining, and you really don't get any reflection in the windshield. Yeah, it's a, a great example of a great material having practical benefits. As opposed to the doors, which are all shiny carbon. <laughs> well, you know, you start to give, you take. <laughs> One of the other things that just, of course, is very interesting to me about cars like this is the fact that the road cars have more horsepower than the race cars. And now most people sort of sitting at home or sitting at a bar think, well, I want horsepower. I want lots of horsepower because that's what makes you go fast. But you as a race car driver knows that's not quite the entire equation, yeah? Well, I think there's been so many different cars and different series, uh, they have different different power plants or six cylinders, eight cylinders, 12, 10, different displacements. And it allows the racing series to have a variety of cars in the series when they can limit the horsepower and um, get everyone on the same sort of power to weight ratio. So they call it the balanced performance, which is the bane of, you know, the bane of the existence of those who want to be creative. Because <laughs> <laughs> it really stymies uh, creativity. Although, you know, I think that one of the things that I still find so fascinating is the fact that even within the parameters of building a race car in which you know you want to get lightweight, great power, predictable handling, 
Then for the street versions, you need to add the fact that people are going to occasionally, or perhaps more than occasionally, drive them the way we're driving today, which is on sort of interesting public roads that certainly have limitations that you would not have on a track. And so, you know, how do you actually set up a car properly so that people can have the confidence to drive it in a way that is entertaining and yet still remains safe? Well, I think what they all they really do for the street is put some climate control in it, some electric windows. So if you come to a toll booth, you can put the window down. Uh, radio maybe, although it's no insulation in here, so the, the music is really from behind us, not from the speakers. <laughs> so I think I think that's really all they really need to do is uh, make it usable for the street with some of the basic amenities. One of the things that uh, is, of course, quite interesting about cars like this is the fact that I like to take long distance drives in cars. And there are certain cars that are more entertaining for 20 minutes, an hour. <laughs> and then you think, okay, what would I do after six or eight hours? And of course, I think about you and your experience as an endurance racing driver. <laughs> what do you look for in terms of comfort for 24 hours? Yeah, on the street is a bit different. That's a job, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know that I'd want to do a really long drive in something like this. Yeah. Um, or, you know, whether it's a, a Corvette uh, ready for the track or a Porsche ready for the track. Those aren't really great long distance drive cars. You got to be pretty diehard. I'm jaded though, <laughs> you know, from my experience. I get, I've gotten to drive a lot of really cool cars on the track, so it's uh, not quite the same on the street. Well, that's actually an interesting question to ask. Sort of thinking about the sort of the busman's holiday theme, when a race car driver gets out of his or her race car, do you want to get into a race car for the street? Not really. <laughs> no, not really. What you realize pretty quickly is when you're on the racetrack, it's so much safer than on the streets. <laughs> uh, people think we're a little bit crazy, but you know we're on a public road here, going whatever speed we're going. Very slowly. Yeah, within the speed limit. 25 miles an hour. Exactly. And someone who we don't know, and we don't even know what they're doing in the car, is going 25 miles an hour, coming the other way, and passing us within a foot, right, in the opposite direction. And the race driver is the one who's crazy doing <laughs> on the street. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I don't think there's, so. There's a certain level of trust on a racetrack that you certainly cannot assume on the street. That's yeah. for sure. At least we're all going in the same direction when we're on a racetrack. <laughs> for a start, you know. And, uh, and hopefully paying attention, not texting or, you know, reaching for something on the floor, changing a radio station. <laughs> Thank God for voice controls, you know. You can say... Uh, Scuderia, find me Italian folk music. And, you know, who knows, it might play it. But, you know, uh, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This certainly is entertaining to drive, that's for sure. Even on a road that's uh, not particularly smooth, um, you, know, you can sort of feel what the car is doing. I'll be very interested to get your opinion of the car and how it feels. Um, but ultimately, to me, it seems it wants to be somewhere else. <laughs> Getting some good thumbs up though. Yeah, exactly. Looking so. It does make a noise. It makes that a is nice wonderful. Noise. Yeah. I'm not quite sure about the uh, that strange dip that comes when you downshift or upshift. It's a single clutch. Yeah. So it needs to needs to time. disengage and re-engage a gear and we're not used to that. With a dual clutch transmission you sort of skip that. We get spoiled so quickly by technology that didn't exist not that long ago. <laughs> right. All right, now we're going to see what you think of the experience behind the wheel of this car. <laughs> 